Hello and welcome to the Wisdom Factory, a forum for open-minded people like you and us uh, who have knowledge and experience and wisdom to share with the world. Uh, I'm uh, Mark Davenport and I'm Heidi Hörnlein. All right. And we like to invite people who not only have interesting things to say about their own topics in their lives, but who also have an evolved perspective on themselves and what they're doing. So these are people who feel inspired to contribute to the creation of a, a better world by helping people gain a, a better understanding and perspective on what is happening, both in the world and in their own lives, and what they can contribute to the resolution of the many problems we are facing at this moment in our history. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And you are watching today the 16th episode of our Wisdom Factory show, and which is called Art and Music a la Integral. And our guests are Scott Marshall and David Long. Mm -hmm. Professionally, we are counselors and coaches, mm -hmm. especially for creating thriving relationships. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like as we, we do. Yeah. <laughs> Let us first ask him how come that he is a musician and he is an artist. Yeah. Maybe we start yeah. here. Okay. Well, uh, I kind of, I kind of um, was born that way. I'd say. Thank you. Well, great. And what I, I, I'm noticing as you're speaking here, is that. You have a very uh, kind of grounded uh, way of uh, presenting yourself that is very uh, calming, reassuring, and authentic. I like well, that. thank you, thank you, Mark. That's very. Yeah. You're a sweet guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's fishing, what I'm gonna fishing for compliments. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to to David. He's <laughs> sitting down here so alone. So patiently. <laughs> What kind of nice things you got to say about me? I'm pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, tell oh, us about well, you and your art too. Then we can say some nice things. Then. Okay. Yeah, I liked his uh, answer about being born an artist. I think that everybody is born an artist, and society kind of pounds it out of us. It's al it's also something that is is nurtured, you know. It's something that's developed. I started when I was really young. I think it starts when you are drawing or coloring or something, and you go and you show your mommy or your daddy, and they're like, that's good. Keep doing that. And you do. And I never stopped. I know that society has this way of telling people things like, oh, that's not realistic, or that's not a good way to make money, and... And that and that bit may be true, you know, but um, money is is a, a means in itself, not not an end. And I would like to think that art and self-expression is is really a, an important part of, of being human. And understanding theory, the more understanding you have, the more that affects your your control. And so, you know, your art changes over time as you as you grow and evolve. What was the question? <laughs> Do you say some nice things to him? Do I say some nice <laughs> things about you first? <laughs> you know, what what I really enjoy about about you, David, is that you go right for the hard stuff, the deep stuff, you know? That uh, you are ready to dive in and and parse this this whole business out, you know, and and turn it into words. You know, you may be talking about visual art, you may be talking about your music, but when you talk about it, you have a vocabulary and a determination to take it apart and analyze it and see what you're doing, and to be able to tell what other people are doing also. And it's a it's a priceless gift. I do appreciate that. Man, you are a, a very sweet guy. You do have... <laughs> <laughs> but the, the audience can see that we know you already. We have done already shows together and yeah. collaborated. There is a comment from Nassim, and he asks you, where are Scott and David located? I'm in a, a town called Rumney, New Hampshire, which is here in the Northeast. I'm located in an undisclosed location coming to you as a digital hologram in the interwebs. <laughs> no, I, I live in uh, I live in Fayetteville, Arkansas, right now. 
Okay. Okay, so um, I know you have prepared, David, something. I'm just going to do a spoken word version of, of one of my songs. This song is called With Your Time. It's off of my album, The Outer Regions of Inner Space, and it goes like this. Behold the moon. It reflects the sun. It's always shifting in its phases. In the darkest night, illuminating paths, reflecting on the water as it blazes. Shed your shadow and be born again like the self-eating serpent that sheds its skin. Learn lessons from the moon. Embrace the feminine. You should understand why we feel this connection. We rise each day because the sun's resurrection. It's just too bright to see. So we worship its reflection naturally, realizing our vision actually. From fantasy to factually, we simply use causality to create a new reality. It's all about your mentality. Morality from a perspective beyond mortality. Stop worshiping that fallacy, universal commonality. Dispense with the formalities. You could never have neutrality or forget about practicality. It's all about what you do. And what do you do with your time? I'm moving people up the spiral dynamically, applying this integral philosophy, logic and theosophy, cartography of human possibility, flexibility of the body and mind as a useful tool for I am this in time. Yeah, I'm the divine. If you seek, then you'll find. I am the living truth behind your symbols and signs. I am every light in every lifetime. I am infinite, eternal. Go ahead and rewind. This is my message in a bottle. Send it out to the planet. The future's in our making, so let's sit down and plan it. I am it. Create a better future so that we can all stand it. Balance out the bullshit and together, goddammit. We could do it. Has to do with understanding how to prove it. Take it to the people and create a revolutionary movement. To the middle, if life's a riddle, tiny dancer, this is the answer to our cancer. We can escape the us and them of nationalism by establishing unity, compassion, and rationalism. What do you do with your time? Well, I'm giving you a method. You should listen, go apply it, research it for yourself, the peer review process. Try it. You might just find it works for you. Move from the middle. That's what you do. First, we find the opposites. The opposites attract. Define themselves in opposition. We need to step back. Divisions of four may help with that. And now we see a cycle. Let's look at some facts. Pros and cons on all sides is what we find. We weigh the short-term and long-term possibilities in our mind. From this point of understanding, we can take control, do what we must do to accomplish our goals, not just for me, but for the whole. Balance the universal mind, body, and soul by taking control of the part that you play. Wake up and do that shit every day. This is the new Tao. Yo, this is the new way. You are what you do and you are what you say, so please be responsible for the part that you play. Okay. Oh. <laughs> wow, that was great. Wagnerian in its great. scope. <laughs> Wonderful. I, I, I had a little bit of a problem to really understand. It was very quick. And I would really appreciate if after the show you would um, copy and paste this in the, in the comment stream. Yeah. Oh, the lyric? Nice. Yeah, yeah, the lyric. This leads us a little bit into integral. Yeah, Why it does. Why is your music integral or your art integral? What is the difference? What is that? What does it mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I want to play the person who asks the dumb questions here, you know, because I have, uh, I have, you know, a background in art history. You know, I can go back and I can tell you what century things were printed, or painted in, etc. Uh, and and I really enjoy that. I, mean, I see it in buildings. I see it in statues and painting and so on. And I can do it with music too. You know. And then I get to a point about ten years ago, and I started seeing integral stuff, and I said, I don't understand that. What's this? You know. What's going on here that, boom, that I don't quite get, you know? What is it that I didn't quite get, you know, even though I could go through all this history of art, you know, and appreciate the art? Who would like to, who would like to um, enlighten me? Hmm? Yeah. Don't all talk at once. Oh, I'll, I'll go first. I'll go first. Go first Scott. I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll go first, David. You know, I'm ready yeah. to jump right in the deep end, but... <laughs> right. uh, how about this, man? I'll carve it out, and then you do the details, all right? All right, all right. How's that sound? <laughs> Start the carving, man. 
Yeah, I'll carve it. I I think that well, fundamentally, the the whole the whole thing of of integral or the aqual theory is development. So everybody develops through stages. Everybody develops. Everybody starts out square one. Um, so if you apply development to art, that's what you'll see. So you'll or here. So you'll you'll see in art people who um, have gone through different levels. So for example, art can be um, there's different modes of art. You can have tribal art, you can have mythic art, you can have um, modern art or rational art, and you can have postmodern art. And that's really what you'll see is those four. So you got uh, you you got you got early art, you got, you know, the mythic art that you might see at church, you've got art that you that you'll see um, that really kind of swept the world. It's the first kind of art that really transformed the world. Rational art from the modern world, and then you have postmodern art. Excuse me. Can you give yeah. an example here too? Yeah. What would be tribal art? What would be something we know? I, I'm just thinking cave art comes to mind for me. Cave art sure. that you might see in uh, you know a ancient painting. Things like that. Um, in 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 today's world, maybe you'd see it a little bit as graffiti, but there's some there's some artists that don't I don't think apply as as tribal artists that are graffiti artists. But um, so you know well, um, that is it yeah. seems if you don't mind me interrupting is no is, go ahead is it seems like there might be like a cultural style yeah. that can happen at a certain general altitude, but then like a person might take on that style from their perspective, and it's not necessarily that they're at the altitude of the style, that's but right. there's something that speaks about that style to them from wherever, whatever perspective they're coming at it, you know. Like um, Picasso might be doing some like cultural deconstructive kind of stuff with cubism and like taking these different perspectives, and um, someone like Pollock might be in that same kind of um, postmodernist art, but he might not be a postmodernist himself. He might be doing it for other reasons. Yeah, I like the way you put it, David. That's uh, that's very good. So um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll see if I can footnote it, and then you can go ahead more, David, if you'd like. I I think I think that when you get all of a sudden after postmodern art, there's there's been a lot of of confusion as to maybe what art is these days or what makes something integral art. And in terms of development, um, an integral artist is someone who essentially understands the value of all of the other levels of development that had come before. So that's fundamentally speaking what a integral person or an integral artist would see is the truth and partiality of every particular artistic mode there is. It doesn't mean that he or she is throwing all kinds of stuff on a canvas and saying that that's, that's interval art because it includes all the, the former aspects. It might, which would be very pain, painstaking. But it, it, would, it would have the art object made by that person would have that person's particular uh, understanding in somehow as imbued in the art objects. It sounds kind of magical. Can I ask uh, something? Would it be when you are an integral artist, you would appreciate the artists of the other levels, the modern art you would appreciate? You might not like it, but appreciate it for what it is. And the tribal art, or also the mythic art, the church art, I mean, here in Italy, it's all full of this uh, art form. You would appreciate it as as that what it is, and not say, oh, this one, this person is painting horribly, and this is, ah, this is nothing. An integralist would recognize the value of what he or she sees. Is it, the, is it so? I think absolutely, and I would say that they would play with those themes to some, to some extent, too. Like, I think a lot of what my style is is somewhat abstract. Yet, I also have this one portrait painting I have where I'm kind of using some of the, the color schemes of traditional art, like the golds and the blues that, that you would see to imbue some of the meaning that those religious pieces would have had into this other piece. 
So I, I definitely think that they resonate. For me, I think what integral art is about expressing a transpersonal kind of perspective. If you're listening to the lyrics, you almost want to wonder, like, where is this coming from? Like, wh what are the values behind this? And also, I've noticed that in my art, that my, uh, my hip-hop persona or whatever, and my idea going into it was to speak from the perspective of I amness. So to, to, to make music from this ultimate perspective through my eyes, to let that God voice within me speak and to create these kind of anthems or, and, and even like sort of repurposing old school mantras and things like that, like this little light of mine and all is impermanent and, and things like that and, and try to repurpose them in, in kind of a, a, a cool con contemporary way. I always, I'm always tempted to say the word modern, you know, because I mean like like it's like up to date. But I guess con contemporary is the word I'm gonna I'm gonna use to describe that because we don't want to confuse it with the the modern stage of development. But the other thing I think is like what Scott is saying about in the same way that as we grow and as we learn, we take on the lessons of the previous stages. We transcend and include. I would say that. When, when an integralist makes art, he makes it with his whole self, with like all the way up the viral Maslow's needs or whatever, from all of those drives. He makes it from his instinctive drive. He uses, he uses his heart. He, he um, engages with his rationality. And, you know, he, he brings all of these things to the table and like in terms of big mind or something like that the ability to bring all of these voices online and to start to have a conversation with them. Like I notice that when I make a song sometimes, I'll start from like some lower chakras and bring in like the heart space and, and talk about, you know, my pain and my worry and these things. And then I'll bring in some, the, some higher perspectives and I'll put those perspectives in perspective. So I'm really creating a space for the listener to be able to step in and bring their own things that would resonate with what I'm bringing. So I'm, in a sense, like, not just talking about David and what I like, but I'm creating this conversation about what's happening from this particular view. What do you, what do you think, Scott? Yeah, I like that, David. Very well said. I, I wanted to, to like, um, also comment to how important states of consciousness are. So you have, you know, in integral theory, there's roughly three or four states of consciousness, waking, dreaming, uh, dreamless, deep dreamless sleep, and some kind of witnessing, and then maybe even a non-dual stage after that. So when an artist is making their art, especially someone who's integrally informed, also understands how important the states of consciousness are in informing the art. For example, subtle realms, or the subtle body, or the dream state, very important for artists, you know, all throughout history, as a way to envision, or vision, or project, or show imagery that come from a vast realm of imaginative whatever it could be. People that could be part animal, people that could be, that you know, um, different. What your your power animal might be, <laughs> but like, but um, different different aspects of energy, different aspects uh, of how things feel, and especially with an altered state. So if an ar an artist is familiar with navigating different states of consciousness, so usually um, they are and they want to put that in their art, then an integral art would have all of that. You know, would have uh, somebody who, what, what they're doing when you look at their creation, that you will get a hit from. You will get a, you will get a download, so to speak, from that artist where their mind, their consciousness was at when they created that piece, you know. So not only their development, but their state comes through, you know. Wonderful. Yeah. So Thank like you. Alex Gray or something like that, where you look at yeah. his work and you don't just see like a simple kind of objective reality, but you see a heightened 
more complete perspective of reality and we add in the things or the elements that we see that maybe the average person doesn't see in hopes to expand their sight. I, I think that's where you're going with that and also using some of this imagery and stuff that is not just purely literal like real world imagery it could be surreal or whatever. I, I like this kind of idea and I was thinking about your fractal art and I was thinking about my art too and I was trying to think about these commonalities and one of the things I was thinking about was is there's this kind of uh, a combination or a hybrid hybridization of like organic forms and theoretical forms and sacred imagery and I think like a fractal does that because it's fractals are, are organic but it's also a theoretical way of of talking about the, the whole ons and the different levels of reality, which which helps us to gain some kind of perspective and usually being able to, to have some kind of image that, that represents reality and gives you some kind of bigger perspective is use is usually seen in, as some kind of a sacred symbol. So I think um, there's a lot of common ground there. I want yes. to to tell the listeners that you are both also philosophers, so you have a sort of language that maybe not everybody gets at the first moment. And would you want to say something? Yes, as I was listening to this, I was starting to think, my goodness, you know, throwing all this stuff onto a canvas, for example, that would be a Wagnerian nightmare <laughs> without some kind of discipline, you know, uh, to to choose and pick and, and sort and, and use very consciously these different elements. And of course you can't use all the elements at once. So I'm putting myself in the, in the position of someone who's hearing about integral art for the first moment. So, you know, how does this get uh, displayed, for example, on a canvas? Let us mm -hmm. uh, ask uh, David, before you showed us the, the, the window, could you show us to the to the yeah. listeners, watchers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, we already see your art behind you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got some back here. Um, mm -hmm. This is a, uh, a window that I found. I like. I'm I'm a poor artist because <laughs> so I like to find things like windows and things that I can paint on. I'm trying to see if I can find a position that doesn't have yeah, too much good. glare. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a this is a window that I painted on, and. Mm -hmm. I painted on the back of it, the background, and then some foreground elements as well. And kind of what I'm what I'm trying to do with a lot of my art is to kind of give a new way of conceptualizing individuals and and their environment and how they relate to each other. I'm sort of doing a fractal kind of thing too, where I'm zooming down a layer, I'm trying to think about cells and biological environments and, and things like that and, and maybe t and to think about humans in a more big picture kind of scope. So each one of these cells represents a sort of a flux of a being at, at a particular point in time. Some of my cells are more green and these ones are more yellow and turquoise and a lot of these colors correlate to the theoretical aspects of spiral dynamics which has to do with human development. So in this same kind of way, I guess I'm trying to to get you to to rethink about how you see people and the world around you. Yeah. And that's going to be a common theme, I think, in, in integral art. Yeah. There's some purpose to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just trying to get you to take a, a bigger picture perspective and to see yourself and your environment in that kind of a way, I think is, is one of the main motivations behind it. That's wonderful. Oh. Wonderful. We are we very near our time, but I want to give David uh, the possibility to show his uh, screen share and talk a little bit about this. So this first piece that you see here, you can see that it's on a red background. I painted this for a friend of mine knowing that he was going to put it on his red wall. For me, this was like the beginning of my Cells in Flux series, which is the name of, of this series that I'm doing, because I was really interested in the way that the colors affected each other. Like, 
so I almost did like these stacking, these piling, this piling kind of thing of these different cells. And like when I was going through with my brush, I was connecting different colors in different areas. It was almost like in the in the way that societies or in social situations, different people have an effect on each other. And I was I was um, really thinking about that, and that was what we what really got me started thinking about some of these ideas. This is uh, one of my newer pieces, and uh, this is exploring some more of the the abstract style. My style, I think it really started it out being about trying to find a balance, a balance point between chaos but also like hard lines and getting the right color balance so that way certain things pop and it gives sort of a 3D kind of an effect to, to get the right kind of darkness and light so it's not just a bunch of colors exploding at you but it has like the depth in it so that way the colors pop. This is a, another one of my early ones that I like a lot. One of the things I, I like about it is that it's got kind of a, a grid behind it. So I feel like it, it's really starting to do uh, a good combination of this theoretical, sacred, and organic kind of combination. Somebody was telling me that they thought that the, the lines and stuff that you see on the side on the right over here kind of look like a, a rib cage or something and I, I, like, I like that idea. So this is a, a theme that I've been exploring a lot lately and I'm trying to get a bunch of work done in the area, get a bunch of variations on the theme and then I'm gonna have a giant show. I'm selling prints and scans and you can get a lot of this stuff on, on Society6 like you can get this as your your shower curtain or like as a rug or as your phone case or something like that. I have links to all all that stuff on my website. Yeah, this is wonderful. Celebrate the show, the Wisdom Factory. <laughs> and thank you everybody for having been our guests and our audience. Will you do that? I certainly will. And then you have to give something to Scott and to David too. How am I going to do that? And to all our watches. I, I see know. rain. Rain, did you prepare all your right. glass? There we go. <laughs> all right. Something you know Chardonnay. You know Chardonnay. Okay. okay. <laughs> this right. is for Yay. you. Me. And I'm a for me. Cheers. And I'm just like, Cheers. Okay. Cheers. And Cheers. thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks so much, you guys, for having this great show. I'm so glad to be a part of it. Oh. And so glad that you came. Yes, really. And yeah, thank you. Thank you, da Scott. Thank you David. Thank yeah. you, Scott. Just, I wanted, I was wanted to thank David for a nice chat with him and and a nice chat with you guys, Mark and Heidi. Thank you so much. And <laughs> thank bye, you guys. bye, 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 everybody.